Deadpool and Wolverine. It's the highest grossing R-rated film in history Woo. with $1.086 billion in the box offices globally, oh, defeating 2019's Joker, which reached, do you know? $1.078 billion at the time, so just a measly $80 million in it. Shit. It's the first crossover movie since the Fox Disney merger, where Disney purchased Fox's assets in 2019 for a whopping $71.9 billion. I saw that, by the way. That is. I wouldn't go F on this early, but that is mad. That is the <laughs> that most is so insane much. amount. Of, oh my God. Well, oh, anyway. Really. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the May Night Podcast, where we are ranking every film ever made. Hello, Dave. Today, we are diving into the latest box office titan, giving mm. you a non-spoiler review for the first 15 minutes. We'll also rate the film across seven different categories and wrap things up with a Fredzilla special segment. We've Ooh. got a jam-packed episode today, so strap in, strap on, <laughs> and let's kick things off with our initial reactions. Very strapping on. You can strap on for this one. That is very relevant. <laughs> it's based actually on the content relevant. of the film. That is. Uh, this is this score that we're about to give is the most subjective score possible. We are simply trying to bottle how much we enjoyed this movie. On the count of three, who went first last time? I think it was me, right? Uh, it was. Because you counted me in. Yes. Okay, Fred, your opinion out of ten to one decimal place on Deadpool and Wolverine. Three, two, one, go. Six point four. Six point six. Ooh. Ooh. Just either side of the six point five mark of yeah. absolute neutrality. I have six point eight written down right here. And I was like Oh you had six point eight written really? down. And then and then I was like, you know what? And I wrote everything I thought about it and thought I can't have it as a uh, but for anyone who cares, my differentiator between net good and net bad. 6.5 which I've now adopted I think I like it 6.5 seven's maybe a bit too hmm that's quite good yeah I agree with that so look this this was a difficult one to work out whether mm. it's good or bad but I just felt there were so many parts of it which <sighs> I hate pandering yes and they they get around it effectively on the most part because they acknowledge it's it. Deadpool and they acknowledge it so much. Yeah. But still, that feels like a cheap out. That mm. feels like a cheap out. So I just couldn't. This is the conversation I was having in my head just, just as you were going yeah. three, two, one. Yeah. And you know what blurted out with me? 6.4, not 6.8. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, 0.4 is quite a big disparity, but I've, I've really been knocking it down in my head the last five minutes. What about you? Talk to me. 6.6. 6. Yep. Deadpool and Wolverine. So it's been purchased by Disney. Yep. First crossover. Uh, Deadpool effectively is entering the Marvel Universe. It's uh, one of those rare R-rated superhero movies. We don't get many of those. Mm. Um, it has performed ridiculously well at the box office, breaking a billion dollars. Yeah. Uh, one of only 55 movies to ever break a bill. Um, obviously, it's starring Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman, who, by the way, looked unbelievable jesus he is like shredded <laughs> oh my god anyway let's not linger on that huge um, jacked man <laughs> yeah i love keeping that have you not forever. heard that before <laughs> no that's so good i can good. tell by your reaction that's yeah. so good okay so i'm gonna start with the good things okay um mm -hmm. it hits its target with absolute precision so if you like deadpool and you like marvel you're going to absolutely love this movie mm -hmm. uh it's it, it really is just fan service galore. There's cameos every 30 seconds. There's references to the Avengers every 35 seconds. It's nostalgia paradise. Uh, the plot itself was basically just a meta commentary uh, mm -hmm. on the whole merger and, and how things are going Pretty wrong. Uh, Ryan Reynolds is doing exactly what he does as Deadpool. So if you like that, he's still doing it. He's breaking the fourth wall, mm. meta joke making. Uh, every single word that comes out of his mouth is some sort of attempt at a joke. And he does have the ability to be funny at times. Um, and so they've absolutely, they, if you are aiming for a specific target, uh, you, you they have nailed it. It's perfect. Mm. They've done exactly what Deadpool and Marvel fans will want. And I understand that. Um, the action and the visuals way better than some of the recent Marvel stuff. I haven't watched a hell of a lot of the Marvel stuff. I'll get onto that in a minute. Um, I thought the score was quite good. Uh, and mm. there were a couple of licensed songs, which I, I also quite enjoyed. I, I mean, Green Day coming out of nowhere was just like, I, you know, I love that. So mm. um, did you feel it was a bit like 
again, like, here we go. They'll like this. Oh, yeah. mate, I, I get it. Every into turn. It. I get it. Yeah, okay. okay, so let me make this clear. 6.6. 6. I didn't really like this movie very much. I don't care about Marvel anymore. I just don't give a shit, okay? Mm. I just, you've lost me. You've done way too much. Yeah. Your, your whole cinematic thing is just... You've you've gone completely overboard on quantity and just just all but forgotten about quality. Yeah, I don't care off. about Marvel anymore. And this whole film is basically just this is about Marvel. It's about mm. Marvel, the whole thing. And for me, Deadpool is tiring. He is mm. relentless God, with his yeah. jokes. It is so those aren't that I don't like those two things, and those are the two things it's got going mm. for it. Um if you can't appreciate all the Marvel nostalgia and the meta humor, then what you've got left is some decent fight sequences, another film wheeling out an 80s song uh, to try and get it trending online. Everybody's done it since bloody Stranger Things, and I feel like it's insanely derivative, and I'm, I'm just, yeah. is anyone else going to do this, or are we going to say that enough's enough? Creativity, please. Um, and then uh, the laziest, most confused time-wasting, basic bullshit plot I've watched in a long time. Yeah. I hated it. Uh, the problems that they have to overcome are introduced seconds before they have to overcome it. Uh, we are just told they're insurmountable uh, and then they just kind of get around it and it's fine. Mm. Um, there are whole 20-minute segments that just don't need to be there. The villains don't know what they're doing or why they're doing it. They're not yeah. even remotely intimidating. They're just irritating. And although it's an R-rated movie, a lot of the jokes that the villains were making, a lot of the dialogue around the villains... Felt like it was aimed at children. Like it mm. was just not funny, like at all. At least Deadpool is funny. Like it's adult funny. Yeah. The, like Miss, I'm not going to say his name just in case it's a spoiler. But I, the villains were atrocious. Um, the best, really, it just comes down to that. That's my full review. Is just it's got two things going for it which don't work for me. And mm. so what's left is just utter bullshit. And that is why I don't like this movie. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more I am angry at the film as a concept because it's a it it's such a punch in the face to the audience. But it's got done under the guise of we need to really stop doing this. Like there are specific points <sighs> where it like this isn't a major spoiler because you can expect it, but maybe minor, minor here. Like they will specifically reference like, we need to stop doing this, guys. We need to stop doing the multiverse thing. And it's like, just because you say that doesn't mean... It's you like, it's like you know it. when someone has a really, really shitty personality trait, but they sometimes acknowledge it. And you're like, everyone's like, yeah, to be fair. <laughs> Stop doing that, please. <laughs> they do like kids. <laughs> Sorry, too far. But, you know, like, yeah, you just because you acknowledge it, you know, I, I, initially you're like, yeah, well, fair enough, actually. Once? And then you're like, no, you, you can't be like that just yeah. because you acknowledge it. And this happens on a routine basis. There's one specific moment where... You mentioned the fight sequence. I didn't really... No, it's not that I didn't like the fight sequence. I did generally like the fight sequences. But, like, the first major one... Well, not the... Th midway through, right, there's, there's a big one. And he specifically says in it, you guys get a load of this, nerds. Yeah. Like, he goes... Nerds get shock go. out or something like that. Yeah. Special and shock you're out. Like, yeah. I, I, I was like, I'm not going to enjoy this at yeah. all after you say that. like and, and it's not only that. The way the fights happen, this isn't major spoilers. You mentioned the AT soundtrack. Every single one they did, they had this like this gimmick where they do 80s soundtrack and then stop it for a bit of bash, 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 bosh. Yeah. And then like edit in, okay, the next hit, back into the song. Mm -hmm. And they did it throughout each fight. It would happen two or three times. And they did it in every fight with different songs. Yeah. And I didn't like it the first time. I hated the way that that was edited to specifically make it seem more impactful. It, was, it felt so inauthentic yeah. and inorganic the way that they were trying to drive an audience reaction. And then they just hit you over the head with, well, actually, we know what you guys want and we're going to get away with it because we say, you know, we're going to tell you the trick and then we're still going to trick you anyway. No, you're not going to trick us anyway because 
We we get, we've seen this three times. It's the third Deadpool. Maybe if yeah. this was the first, like part of my real issue with it is Deadpool as a character and Ryan Reynolds performing Deadpool is perfect. Like he's perfect for the role. He's perfectly cast. Agreed. But he's not a character that I could ever invest in for more than one film. Yeah. <laughs> like for sure. it gets so it, tiring. He's relentless. He's tiring. He's, yeah. Uh, it's it. It's almost one trick pony. For three two and a half hour films, three two hour films, it's like. And I watched a I watched a video on someone talking about how desperate this was as a move for Marvel, based on how badly they're doing yes. some of the moves that they're now making. And I wasn't like I've, I I watched the video and thought, look, yeah, maybe you're overthinking it, mate. Like, come on, it's a bit of fun. But the more I do think about it, the more I am like. He, he describes himself as Marvel Jesus because of the allegory that Jamie mentions about how the they are effective. The whole film is effectively a metaphor for the um, uh, 21st Century Fox, the, the Marvel or Disney acquisition of 21st Century Fox and the subsuming of 21st Century Fox into the Marvel franchise. And it is like, right, so you are going to just... It's like someone said, we're really struggling here. Why don't we throw Deadpool at it? Yeah. And then they just said, yeah, let's do it. And then they did the most tired, um, like with so little thought into the plot, into the story, yeah. but we'll at least throw loads of references, loads of cameos. Some of them will land. Yes, the jokes land. Yes, the fight scenes. Some of them are good. But like, just as an idea, I am so morally against this yeah. that... Six point. I'm glad I erred on the side oh of it. Oh my god! Not I being regret, good. Yeah. I mean, it's it is it is pandering. It is the archetype of mm. pandering. It's pandemonium. It's mm. just ridiculous. It's like that is that's all they've got. They've just gone. We're just going to. We know what people want. They want cameos. They want meta jokes. They want Deadpool. They want us to take the piss out of ourselves. Okay, cool. Do we need to worry about plot? Nah. Do we need mm. to worry about villains and characters? Nah. Do we need to think? Do we need to get anybody above like a sort of first year editing student who just fucking put something together? Nah, don't worry mm. about it. Like it just, it felt like what, it felt like what they did was they said that all we need to do is this and we've got a movie and that's going to be successful. And the worst thing is they were right. It's yeah. made them a billion dollars. That's so they're the, just going to keep fucking doing the it. The thing I hate most about this is it was so <laughs> it's successful. It's made so much money. I went and to the cinema. it's such a pile of shit. Three, three weeks after this came out, we went to the cinema. It was packed. So, oh. Like, it was packed. Someone okay. was sat in my seat and I had to move them. Look, after all that ranting, I want to make some points to explain why it's not lower. Um, yeah. I think that... I fucking hate Ryan Reynolds sometimes, but... Hugh Jackman, on the other hand, mm. what a hunk. He's great. He is great. <laughs> he's <isn't> great. <laughs> he's phenomenal. <laughs> he's basically carried this. Uh, yeah. No, he, he was cool. Um, I mentioned the fight sequences. Yeah, I actually agree with you on the editing, but the choreography was quite good. I agree. Yeah, I like the choreography. It was, I, a lot of the the visuals, if we if we put that under visuals with the, the broad CGI, I like the way Deadpool looked. Okay, because he's, I think he's fully CG or something, right? I don't. Is that I, right? I, I, I Okay, sorry for anyone listening. Fact check that, but whatever the case, he looks great. He okay. looks great. Everyone looks really good in it, um, and the action was really good in it. And I think that from what I have seen of Marvel recently, it is not good. Like mm. it doesn't look good. The fighting is rubbish. The CGI is rubbish. Everything yeah. visually is atrocious. And this was very beautiful. Like, mm. okay, no, let's not get carried away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Apologies, everybody. I don't mean that. It wasn't. <laughs> it was, it was, it had good fights and it, it looked, the CG was good. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to piggyback on your response and say why I haven't given it lower, mm -hmm. even though, you know, we spoke about what would be a really, really low score. What does that mean? And it has to be something that maybe you actively are ethically against <laughs> and this might <laughs> this falls into that category but part of the reason why i have not given it a lower score is for well a few reasons so the 
again, like you, I haven't kept up with the Marvel Cinematic Universe beyond Endgame. Like that felt like a, a very fitting conclusion. Mm. And I had no interest whatsoever in following up with any of them outside of what, you know, maybe hearing about films coming out. I, I'm not sure which ones I've even followed. I'd have to recheck, but I don't even know which ones. This I've is the whole point in the movie. Yeah. This is the whole point in the plot. And so they don't really, re- other than saying effectively these films have been shit, they don't have any specific references like you can miss all of those yeah. it doesn't matter like it didn't yes. matter for me yes. but what it does do is give a a love letter somewhat to the 21st century marvel properties mm. 21st century Pro, uh, fox marvel properties i think all of which i'd i'd watched and enjoyed and have been a part of my childhood and life and so the references and the jokes generally did land so i enjoyed yeah. that as an idea and i i quite liked that they gave send off to certain characters i quite liked i I liked mostly all of the cameos uh, and i did have fun with the film but still think that it's like i hate the film in the same way that you know you hate yourself sometimes (laughs) Where you're like, I wish I could make more of a stance against this thing that I don't. No, I, I get what yeah, you're saying. I wish I didn't I eat meat, but it's so tasty. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Where, look, I can't. It, I, I wor- wanna... it kind of works, yeah. but I hate it anyway. I actively, but... this is this disgusts I me. I feel disgusted by it. I feel disgusted. Yeah. I need a sh- another shower. Um, God, the amount of showers we have after these podcasts. Bloody it's old boy, gosh. Deadpool. It's crazy, isn't it? Um, you mentioned the Fox. I brought it up earlier, but you mentioned the Fox marvel disney marvel explain to me the fox disney stuff that goes on in deadpool what is that all about okay so um marvel obviously of long-standing comic book and all of these characters stem from from the comics that have been going on since you know like the 20s the 30s right. quite old so stanley is one of the progenitors of it and and like spider-man that sort of stuff will have come out maybe the 40s that sort of sort of era so marvel itself have been going on a bit bit longer uh, i think action comics is where dc came from and that's so superman would have been a slightly older um but i don't think that I'm not sure if Action Comics was older than Marvel as an institution, but most of the famous sure. characters came around Stan Lee's time. So you've got these characters. Marvel has a you know an apex in terms of popularity through comics in probably from the 40s to the 60s, uh, and then following that is the first wave of like superhero films. DC really set the the tone with this because some of the biggest films within the first wave of comic book films were like yeah your Supermans and your Batmans in, in the 70s and 80s. Right. Um, Marvel kicks on a bit in like the 80s and 90s, but it's really kind of TV movie versions of things like the Fantastic Four and the Spider-Mans. Mm-hmm. And kind of systematically, they lose the rights. Marvel starts to lose a lot of money making poor business decisions and sells off their most famous characters one by one. Right. <laughs> Until you get to the point where you're in the start or the middle of the 2000s and marvel's kind of on its last legs in terms of the amount of the amount of characters it actually owns right so it's it's most popular characters spider-man x-men fantastic four they're owned by other properties now spider-man owned by sony and still actually owned by sony fox owns a lot of the other ones so some of i mean we won't go into detail I want to be careful of spoilers here because sure, I know there'll yeah. be some cameo references. This is more so, just cursory. Anyway. So I'll just give you. Um, I won't go into detail about who people that you might see, but some of the the big hitters, and, and let's say X Men as an example, that's one of Marvel's flagship properties, and Fox owns it back in the early part of the two thousands. And Fox really drives some very successful films during that time. So you got your X Men's, and um, really they kind of do a lot to drive the 21st century comic book movie boom, which Marvel capitalizes on in 2008 when it releases uh, yeah. Iron Man. So really the, the, the first driver of that is Fox and it's got your X-Men, it's got the Fantastic Fours that come out. These all do very well. And then in 2008, Marvel relies on one of the last big characters that it has, Iron Man, and really pumps in a massive effort into that. So did they do anything 
was it Marvel itself that made Iron Man? It wasn't with Disney or with Fox or with anyone. So Marvel made Iron Man in 2008 as its first MCU film. Right. Disney purchased Marvel in 2009. Right. Um, I don't know how long before Disney like really, you know, became the driver of of the movies as they were released yes. or not, how much it was kind of the Marvel team first. Um, but the MCU obviously became the 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 dominant force in film for the 21st century at that point. Mm-hmm. Um and Iron Man was was really like a gamble that spectacularly succeeded. Oh my God. And, and you know what? It deserved it. What a, I love that film. Yeah. And then what you see now is kind of the rise and falls of, of an empire effectively. Because 21st Century Fox at the start of the 2000s was riding very high on the X-Men series. By the point that Marvel is at its apex, which is the 2010s, um, all the way up to the end of the Infinity Saga, you really see the downturn of not only Fox, but some of the other... Um, expanded universe properties that are outside mm. of marvel so for instance your dc has very very checkerboard hit or miss in terms of the amount of high quality movies it release and um, and some real whiffs uh, you also have things like the um horror universe which i can't remember exactly what it's called but had things like the mummy and dracula untold <laughs> and the invisible man like at this point, I mean, Harry Potter starts to really expand its universe as well. Marvel drives this whole, let's just pump out as many films as possible and we'll all be on our own island of different... I don't even know what you call them. These these universe islands that we seem to have in the yeah. 2010s. And basically what Disney has started to do is round them off and, and one by one... Acquired Has basically them. acquired it until Disney's, you know, the big owns... We yeah, own, we own okay. everyone. So there was a downturn in the 2010s. I mean, one of the first to work closely with them was Sony, who give the rights to Spider-Man in some sense while still retaining them. Uh, But obviously Fox had miss after miss after miss. Like the X-Men, the Fantastic Four that came out in the mid-2010s were panned. Um, The X-Men started to really kind of downturn and... They reference it in this, but there is, you know, one film in particular that that stands out and does very well. Um, and it's seen kind of as almost an end of an era for for Fox. Um, Deadpool is probably the only other shining light in that time, which was a massive sleeper out of nowhere. How did that happen here? Uh, and so then we get to this point where Disney buys 21st Century Fox. And now we're in a position where Deadpool is kind of the crossover to explain it and and they literally explain what is happening through the film <laughs> like the film is for sure yeah there's tons of references i mean that's mm. why i've been interested to kind of get that because there's uh, uh i don't want to spoil anything so if you've not watched and you want to then stop here but um there's a scene where you where they, it actually feels kind of respectful a little bit at times in in a deadpool yeah. kind of way where you know they'll see the fox Mm. what would you even call it it's like the logo but the big physical 3d one in the void in the dust and they're Mm. kind of quite polite about it or whatever and uh it's clear you know as somebody who's never watched who's never followed any of this drama Mm. none of that made sense to me really yeah right it was it kept referencing it and i was like okay i can kind of tell what's going on a bit here but Mm. If you get a bit, if you had a bit of an understanding for that, it was actually that those were part of the highest points of the film yes. for me, like referencing that, and and it is a bit of a love letter to Fox, um, and those are films which are very cherished. That's certainly the the good ones, and even some of the bad ones, like they they give them their due as well. Yeah, um, thank you for listening to that. We're gonna absolutely head on charge into some spoilers now, and there's a yes. bloody lot of them. So, um, you have been warned. So let's just fucking go through this plot. I I actually think we are now finally at a point where I could give a, like a, like the plot was probably for me, the worst plot I've ever seen in my entire life. It was insulting. You know, when you once said, how can you give Furiosa such a low thing? It has to be almost insulting. I, not only am I insulted, I'm quite seriously insulted by how lazy and confused this right was, this writing was. 
one. I think this is our first one out of ten. Fuck you. Let's go. Okay, cool. Character. Um, Some good characters. Deadpool, Wolverine, Cassandra... And then about so tr- many characters, and then like a trillion cameos. You know, what? I, I, and I liked the cameos, like okay, not just because they were, um, how, how am I going to word this? You know, most multiverse things will have a load of cameos, and you're like, okay, it's there for the sake of it. But I actually did quite like the fact that all the 21st century Fox characters are back, so it spoke to me. Yep. Still, Wesley fucking Snipes turned up. That's pretty mad. He's a cool bloke. Um, some great characters. I would say an eight. I really hated Mr. Paradox and Cassandra, who were quite important to this particular film. Yeah, like, I that's, hated that's them. why I'm only... Just, I liked a lot of the other characters, though. Like, but they weren't, like, really important. Yeah, but Wolverine and Deadpool are great characters. Yes. So you've got great characters, and then you've got atrocious... What would you give yeah, Cassandra yeah. Nova and Mr. Paradox, who are basically the two main other characters in this film? Yeah, okay. All right. Um Six is mixed. Perfect. Okay, sure. Okay, cool. I thought we were going to go seven there, but I'll take six. No, no, because it's mixed. Uh, dialogue. Um, I mean, it's Deadpool. It's, got, it's funny. There were times where I laughed. I did laugh a couple times. Yeah, I thought there were some, there were some good jokes. And um, it is good. Like, the, the Ryan Reynolds is fucking great at the Deadpool shtick. It's just tiring. So yes. It's just like fucking hell, another one. But I still think dialogue is pretty good. Decent, yeah. Seven? Like seven. Yeah, cool. Okay, so performance. I want to make a quick comment that I haven't made yet. There was a before the car fight, mm-hmm. Hugh Jackman, mm-hmm. Wolverine, <clears throat> went in on Deadpool. I fucking loved that. I thought he was really phenomenal. That yeah. I was like in awe. I was scared to be on the receiving end of that. It was so cool watching it. I agree. You know, I actually thought that as well. Like for a comic book movie performance, that was a real step Unbelievable. above. And then Ryan Reynolds nails Deadpool. Yeah. It's just, you, if you you're can't tired of his it as a thing, it's not because of Ryan. Ryan Reynolds is perfect. Like, that him. is like the most perfectly cast yeah. comic book character. I think, you know, is up there in, in history with, Hugh Jackman, you know, he's yes. next to him. So, yeah, brilliant. Uh, Cass- Cassandra Nova, not good. Uh, Mr. Paradox, um, I mean, not shit good. character, but yeah, also shit. I, I would say at least seven because of how how much, how, the thing is, I think that we need to, we need, to, I know we've already acknowledged it, but we need to make sure we are very clear. Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool could not be more perfect for that role. Yeah. Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, maybe not quite as per- he, but he's like te- he's still nine, ten out of ten for Wolverine. Mm. Like he, apart from his height, obviously. Yeah. Well, I think also you got to add in that this is the first time Hugh Jackman has been. Um, well, it's not the first actually. He did it for Logan, but this was an R-rated version of Wolverine, which was, you know, off the deep end R-rated. Okay. Compared to Logan, which was just he got to say a few. It fucks right. so and he, so that's very different to what he used to do like back in the day so i still say just a seven though seven it's not, okay it's cool. not great is it uh visuals um i like the way deadpool looked i liked the wolverine suit love the wolverine suit the yeah. wolverine suit is good i uh, the fucking hugh jackman huge jacked man huge jacked man phenomenally 10 ripped. out of 10 phenomenally minimum <laughs> some some great trend work going uh, on the fighting <laughs> Yeah, fighting was, was pretty all right. interesting to watch. Um, the editing of the fighting, less so. so. Much. Costumes all good. Pretty good across the board visually. I think that that is there anything that draws away from it? Well, apart from all of the bloody, you know, energy beam lines that are in all of these comic books, it's like it's it's taking from a very well established formula. I don't so think not, they negate. I don't think. No. I think they are just mad. They no, right. but the, what I'm saying is you're not breaking much new ground yes. apart from in the costume department where you're doing a lot. Costume uh, choreography of fights. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, and execution of the choreography, like the actual movement of the actors. Uh, seven. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, sound. Seven. Yeah, but it did it. Can we go six? Because it actually sure. annoys me. Yeah, I agree. The way they used it. Even yeah. though the songs were good. I, I cannot stress this enough. This this is a platform that 
I really I'm so glad I get to give this fucking opinion on. I cannot wait for them to stop wheeling out 80s songs for movies. It's so, mm. so derivative that it pisses me off. Yeah. Like when Saltburn did it, I was like, we're still doing this? Mm. Like we're still trying it? The thing is, like Deadpool, it works. Mm. Like as annoying as it is, like people like it. It does well in the charts shortly afterwards. Madonna's going to be in the charts for the next few weeks, almost certainly. Mm. Like... But it annoys me. I, yeah. I wish they'd stop doing it. Just give it a different decade. Yeah. That'll yeah, you literally. Just yeah, better, yeah. You know? Just fucking whap a 60s in there 60s or something. 60s would be great. 90s. I love a bit of the 60s. Get, love it. Imagine if bloody Blue came on or something. <laughs> if Blue came on, that would be quality. <laughs> yeah. Do you be in the 2030s, maybe? Oh. Bit of future. Bit of future. <laughs> beep, boop. <laughs> you... <laughs> beep, boop. Beep, boop. Okay, moving on from our not very funny joke, uh, Impact. So, box office, Done very Impact, well, 10 it? out of 10. Will it impact cinema or Marvel or comic book movies or superhero movies or R-rated movies forever? What's the answer? I think given the convergence, the, the proof will be, will be in the critical pudding over time, whether yes. people find it to be too much of a... Uh, well, yeah, whether people think it's a bit of a slap in the face. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. mean, general consensus seems to be no. Yes. Um, so I don't think it's... 10 out of 10 impact for... Okay, so it's the highest grossing R-rated film of all time. That's pretty big, isn't it? I I reckon we go... It's an 8 or 9 for me. I, I think if it breaks a bill, it needs to be 9. Like a yeah. billion dollars. Well, how many films do f- a billion... 55. Per, yeah, but per year, it, it happens a lot more frequently now. That is a like very good question. It's not even like the most, it's not even the highest grossing film of this year. Inside Out 2 is. Really? Yeah. Wow, good for them. Uh, I think it's going to take me too long to Google this. So let's just go I with think, eight. Yeah, hit an eight. eight. Eight's great. Okay, so uh, before we go into our final segment, the Mate Night podcast has now rated Deadpool and Wolverine out of 10 in nine different categories. Uh, We have taken the average to determine once and for all how good was Deadpool and Wolverine. So without further ado, we have rated it the following 6.4 out of 10 for Fred's enjoyment. So purely subjective, 6.6 for my enjoyment. Uh, a one out of 10, a first ever one out of 10. Uh, and that comes under the plot rating because it was insultingly bad. Uh, character, six. Dialogue, seven. Performance, seven. Visuals, seven. Sound, six. Impact, eight. Giving it an average score of 6.11 out of 10, making it the 32nd greatest film of all time until further notice mm. it also puts it five from the bottom of yeah, all the films we've not done doing that great and could have been lower based on our moral our questioning of the ethics of this plot was a slap in the face to everything that is good about writing and the only thing is that we take away is you know it was fairly enjoyable yeah i still gave it in the sixes for enjoyment yeah there that's it that's what I'm going to say thanks so much for listening everybody I I really genuinely do appreciate it we've got more content coming out on YouTube uh, on basically anything that you uh, listen to podcasts on so please do check us out on there Mm -hmm. Uh, we've got one more segment for the long form listeners